All right. This is uh, m uh, my theory on, uh, I'm working on this theory about porno and uh, the rapes and uh, how it's tied into the justice operations of, of the state. So, uh, you know, uh, porno and drugs had been fueled and fed by uh, rapes in prisons, and they are very much tied into one another through a medium of trickery over the unconscious and collective mind. In my opinion, this evil trickery and deception which had been at work could also be recognized as demons and evil misguided spirits. <clears throat> but, you know, that's if we want to talk you know, religious and spiritual about it. But in general, drugs such as crack and crystal meth and even psychiatric drugs can cause undesirable mental conditions within users. This can be done to users who have been completely unsuspecting that such sickened conditions of the mind could even be. Mental insanity can happen very soon and very visibly, as often the case with crystal meth and crack. But this process of mental breakdown with drugs can also happen gradually and insidiously as if to sneak up on a user. On a related note, psychotic and suicidal conditions have often been caused in this way with psychiatric drugs when users stopped taking them. Now think about that for a minute. In many cases, the persons had not been, or the person had not been as bad off before they started on these drugs, you see. Maybe they had asked for something to help them with, you know, mild depression or mild anxiety. And that was their condition at first, without being on the drug. But now, after using for a while, and then stopping use, now they had become suicidal. Well, where did that come from? You know, they weren't that way before they started the drug. So something the drug did made this person's condition even worse if they were now off the drug. Now, there are other known causes of, of these same types of psychotic and suicidal conditions besides drugs. For example, we already know that severe mental illness can be caused by forcing someone into a lockdown, and especially when isolated into a solitary confinement. For a person who has already been traumatized by being locked into solitary confinement, then even the threat of another lockdown can cause severe mental anxiety and stress. Furthermore, we have documented cases that show a person who started out being of sound mind and who then got placed into a long extended period of lockdown could experience all sorts of mental delusions and wild hallucinations without taking any drugs at all. Now, also keep in mind about wild hallucinations. There are documented cases where users, drug users, who had shared the same drugs and did them together, experienced the very same mental delusions and hallucinations together. So, as part of my theory, so here we have the two most common causes of mental insanity. It's in my belief. First, we have the jail and prison lockdowns, which can cause mental delusions and hallucinations, and that's a proven fact. And that can be done to someone without having them take any drugs. That that's the justice of the state in and of by itself at work. Second, we have the drugs, which can also cause mental delusions and hallucinations. So, you know, uh, I, I, so perhaps there's a relationship between these two causes. Could it be that these things which seemed to be separate and unrelated, unrelated as causes are more dependent on one another than we may have first suspected? Let me explain my, uh, my theory a little better here.
there has been frequently exhibited instances of specific types of mental insanity caused by the use of the illegal drugs such as crack and crystal meth. For example, people who take these drugs have often become extremely paranoid about cops, about law officers, about being imprisoned. Now, someone may argue that this is because they are doing something illegal. Yet, people who have been known to conduct other illegal activities, such as gambling or prostitution or maybe even stealing, you know, they, but, they, but they did not develop paranoid delusions about cops from that. So the fact that they were doing something illegal did not by itself produce the mental insanity. But the drug use combined with the illegal activities could cause mental and emotional conditions such as extreme paranoia and even panic or terror about cops and, you know, if the cops were around or something, you know. Therefore, we must concede that it was the influence of the drugs that had been mostly to blame for their mental condition and it was not so much that they were doing something illegal. Uh, or at least it seems that way. Now, even if these things were present a little bit without the drugs, the condition of mental illness and paranoid delusions about cops were now exhibited to a very severe degree due to the influence of the drugs. You see, it may have been there a little bit without the drugs, but with the drugs, it was really bad, you see? Now, keep in mind that the drugs work their influence by way of the unconscious mind. These drugs can make people into something very much the same as a hypnotic subject. Now, we, are also, we, we, we also know the unconscious and subconscious mind can interpret words, phrases, and commands very literally. Well, how do you think this unconscious mind that interprets things very literally, how do you think that interprets the phrase war on drugs? Or how about fighting a war on drugs? Does not the phrase on drugs mean taking and using drugs? Are we therefore taking and using drugs and then fighting a war on drugs? You know, under the influence of drugs. Do you see, do you see what I mean? Or how about when someone is locked into jail for drugs? If something is done for drugs, does that not mean that we did something to get drugs? or in the interest of drugs? After all, the drug user may personally well know that people can do bad things to other people for drugs. Would this not be how the unconscious mind of a drug user could interpret the phrase when cops had done these things to other people for drugs? Think about it. Would a drug user not see the cops as enslavers who had forced them into lockdown for these insane periods of time and it was all done to them for drugs. Now, since they started locking people into jail and prison for drugs, based on these drug laws, the drug problem in the society has gotten much worse. We know that drugs were blamed for being bad because they cause the condition of being locked into a dependency on the drugs. Or we could call that a lack of independence. They caused a lack of independence in someone. Yet the prison, and for that reason we said they were bad. Yet the prison or jail, which also locks people in, was the justice of the state. It was being imposed on any drug user. But now... That causes a total lack of independence. Now, the individual was physically stuck and locked into this condition. And as opposed to only being mentally stuck and locked into something. See, now they're physically stuck and locked in. And uh, that lack of independence caused by the drugs can be much more severe now. You see, uh, uh, so, so someone has been stripped of their freedom and that have been done to them for drugs, 
You see? And that's the justice of the state at work by itself, in and of itself, and being much worse than the drugs. See, being locked in, being stuck, you see? And let me explain if, uh, how that makes the drugs more powerful. If it, if it was done for drugs, would this not mean that it was done in the interests of drugs? If the drugs wish to enslave and imprison someone mentally to, to the drugs, would the drugs not benefit from someone having been enslaved and imprisoned physically when that had also been done for drugs? Let us also consider further that this terrible thing which had been done to someone and it had been done in the name of justice. Justice. And this attack on freedom, which was being done by the justice operations, was also being done for drugs. Enslavement was called justice itself. And enslavement was the thing being done for drugs. For drugs. Does this not make enslavement to the drugs an operation of justice being done by the drugs themselves? We also know that since the state and the law began this practice for drugs, things such as crime and poverty have got much worse in the society. Also, the statistics for drug addiction have never been as bad. In other words, after the so-called justice operations had caused people to be physically stuck and locked into a jail or prison, it made things worse than before. Now the drugs could have a much stronger hold on people. The drugs had gained much more power to make people mentally stuck and locked into that addiction. Now, due to the fact of very strong control tactics being imposed hypnotically, and this is hypnotic power by the drugs, and the fact that the hypnotic power and force of the drugs is being made more powerful through law enforcement operations, which had been done for drugs, for the drugs, then it could be arguable that these justice operations have been the hidden cause of many of these terribly undesirable mental and emotional conditions that had at first seemed to be only from taking the drugs. Furthermore, the prison operation is infamous for having forced people into situations where they were raped and sexually assaulted. This had often involved scenarios which had been staged by corrections officers to deliberately set people up for rape. The rapes were usually done by known serial rapists who were inmates, but in some instances it had also been rapes or sexual coercion by corrections officers themselves. Now, what's going on in the mind of a drug offender who also now had, you know, he had been, uh, he or she had been the victim of rape in prison, and they had to endure this torment of prison, and they were forced into this situation by officers, and they got raped. All of that happened as a direct result of that so-called justice operation, and it was all being done to them for drugs. Now, we can take this terrifying prison situation and make a comparison to the effects of drugs in a number of certain ways. For example, we could say that being raped in prison could be considered as being a total loss of sexual control. Similarly, we could say that drugs in certain individuals had also caused a loss of sexual control. Again, being that this experience of people being forced into sexual activity had been tied into drugs, then the drugs had also become more sexually coercive. Remember that the forced sex happened as a direct result of 
so-called justice operations, and it was all done for drugs. Well, that can give the drugs much more hypnotic power and unconscious sexual influence over the user. We learn of plenty of cases when, without drugs, the user was not sexually active, or if they were, they were monogamous or something like that. But under the influence of the drugs, the user could find themselves suddenly engaged in all sorts of sexual activity with all sorts of partners and all you know, types of craziness, but which they, they simply would not have been doing it if it were not for drugs. If it were not for the drugs, you see? My theory here also asserts that this loss of sexual control can be transferred to unsuspecting users by way of the unconscious and collective mind through the hypnotic influence of the drugs. This includes those users who have not even been locked into prison and have not had the experience of being forced into sexual activity, but the sexual influence is still powerful over them only by having taken these drugs. The law enforcement officers out on the streets have also been infamous for abusing their power. According to Tom Jackman of the Washington Post, there are thousands of cases of abuse of power reported every year. And by the way, 95% of the times when there's abuse of power, it's the male officers who are the culprits. 95% of the times. Now, some of these cases of abuse of power by these male officers had been to force a woman into sexual acts or maybe in some cases a man. Another factor to consider is that you have law enforcement officers providing people with drugs as they do uh, for their normal undercover narcotics protocol. See, this is normal procedure. You know, they get an undercover cop to go in there buying and selling illegal drugs, participating in illegal activities. You know, so when they, so when they exchange drugs for sex, then you have a form of sexual abuse within law enforcement operations. And we can presume that the UCs or snitches, especially if they are pretty girls, have engaged in sexual acts with law officers. Although it may not appear as being rape or sexual abuse, and since it appears completely voluntary, we can still identify this as a form of sexual coercion. Keep in mind that it may have been voluntary only so long as the UC was, or the snitch, was under the influence of drugs. If she had been addicted to and had been actively using, or recently using even, then she was willing to be a UC, and that often meant pulling tricks. But if she had been staying clean off the drugs, then she had no desire to do any of it. Now, I want to go into some other areas of this drug problem that may also seem unrelated at first, but I think they can be tied into this point I am making about sexual abuse and drugs. Keep in mind that there are weird things that sometimes happen with drugs. On some occasions, drugs seem to be able to cause medical conditions in some users that are unusual for most users. See, rare medical conditions, I'll call it a rare uh, side effect or a rare allergic reaction or something, you know. Now, also keep this other point in mind to make this, to what I'm trying to make this point here, that medical conditions themselves, oftentimes, in general, usually have ended up having severely affected the sexual organs or those areas of the body that are sexually important. So here is my question that I want us to think about. Could there be a relationship between the physical conditions caused on people by rapes and abuses which happened through law enforcement and the hypnotic and psychosomatic effects of the drugs? People who were at the mercy of the justice operations you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm asking that as a question, you know, if someone can help me with this, we could work on this theory, develop on it a little bit more, that would be helpful. You know, 
people who were at the mercy of justice operations had to endure the physical abuse of uh, the physical abuse and the rapes, and then that may have resulted in physical harm and injury to the sex organs or to those areas of the body that are sexually important. Now, remember that unhealthy mental conditions, you know, uh, had, which had occurred as the direct result of justice operations, could be transferred to others through a sort of collective mind. It was almost the same as an online network of users, which, sh uh, which was shared in common by drug users. And so any users who were online and linked up by the drug, so to speak, could be struck with the virus. Uh, and, you know, they could, they could uh, you know, uh, they, they, they could uh, get the, they could have this, this mental insanity, this paranoia, this extreme paranoia of cops, you know, uh, or other, or the other types of mental insanity with drugs. Uh, you know, there's common phobias, there's common things that drug users do. I know that on crystal meth, there's this common uh, sort of uh, thing with crystal meth users. They start, or it was on the uh, show Breaking Bad, where they would start digging, you know, digging. Uh, I don't know what that was about, but you know what I mean? It seemed that if drug users, or they would be picking at their face, you know, they're picking, they're in the mirror picking at their face, you know. It's a common side effect of the crystal meth, or, com or you know, commonly exhibited among crystal meth users in particular, you know. So it seems that you have an, a drug, you have like an online, or I don't want to say like, because it's not likable, uh, you know, it's, this is not likable, common use of the word like. So you have what appears to be uh, an online network of users, and they're, and, and, they're, and they're linked up in common by this, by having shared uh, this, by having uh, been uh, using this drug, and I have, they have that in common with fellow drug users. So you see, by that, they're linked up to this online network, and then, and then, uh, and then it's almost as if a virus can, can, uh, can, uh, can come in the same way a virus can come in and uh, infect any machine who's online on a network, on a computer network, you see? In almost the same way it's going on. So, you know, but in, so in the same sort of way that this collective mind could be used as a medium to transfer unhealthy mental conditions, you know, so you got all these weird, unhealthy mental conditions, these unhealthy, uh, uh, you know, uh, states of mind. Uh, some of them, they have a lot of them in common. The paranoia of the cops, the extreme paranoia of the cops, that's a very common one. You know, then with the crystal meth users, they, have, they all seem to have some really weird traits in common, you know. The, the, sh the, the uh, shifting and the, and the, you know, the twitching and the fidgeting and all that stuff, you know. So, you know, it's, they're, they're, so that's causing mental conditions and physical conditions, you see? So, you know, could, so could, these, so could these other unhealthy physical conditions also be transferred to others by way of this sort of virus infection through this online network, which these drug users are all linked up online with this drug? You see what I mean? I, 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 like I said, I'm trying to work on the theory, okay? So I would like some help from someone to work on this theory. But, you know, after all, these unhealthy physical conditions had also occurred as a direct result of justice operations for the drugs. In other words, could it be that the drugs, which have now gained a much stronger hypnotic and unconscious control over a user, you know, then in that way, that had contributed towards a physical manifestation. So either, so now, now you could say, you know, you could say, oh, it was caused by an illness, unrelated, or maybe they say, oh, it's a rare medical side effect, or maybe it's an allergic reaction to something else, you know. Whatever label the medical people may have given to it, you say, but somehow it had mimicked the physical effects of sexual abuse and or physical assault. Do you see what I mean? In other words, it ended up being something that looked very similar to that attack on the sex organs. You see? To that sexual assault that had resulted in the injury of those parts of the body which are sexually important. Now, let me take this back to the porno industry. One of the biggest contributors to the porno industry is drugs. From girls doing the scenes to the producers and filmers, let us, let us not forget the viewers. 
and the porno business has been paraded with drugs. Most or almost all porno had been done with girls who were under the influence of drugs. Now today they've grown the industry to be a big successful industry and they got all this money and glamour and you know stuff to be uh, make it very attractive to girls even girls who are not on drugs. The point to keep in mind is that th the way they got that way, the way they got to be to have so much money and influence is because they they duped a lot of girls into it a lot and most of these girls or all these girls had been on drugs when the, when the when when the when the when they uh, built when they were building up that porno industry they did it through drugs through the influence of drugs and by using girls who were under the influence of drugs now if we have already established that the drugs have been fueled and made more powerful by the routine rapes and sexual abuse done through justice operations for drugs. Now, these are justice operations. This is what we do for drugs. Okay, we do this for drugs. Okay, well then that had given the drugs a very unfair advantage of control and influence over these girls. Again, it may seem totally voluntary, but the problem is the influence of the drugs is so strong that you can't really say it is totally voluntary. It was that the girl had succumbed to, or it was what the girl had succumbed to, in order to get more of those drugs that she was addicted to. The fact about that is that they are not voluntarily addicted to those drugs. You see, being an addict did not happen to them by choice. Therefore, when she was doing things to get these drugs, then she was not making such a free choice about these things, being that she had no choice in being an addict in the first place. She could be in much better control of herself and her own actions when staying clean off the drugs. When she has truly regained her own power of choice about these things, then guess what? Oftentimes, in many, many cases, doing porno had become an undesirable choice for her. You see? Or it, even, it had even become a choice that was out of the question for her. You see? So in other words, when you take the drugs out of the equation, many or most of these girls really do not care to do the porno scenes anyway. Alright, so let's go ahead and say a prayer today for all the girls who have been addicted to drugs and who have been exploited by the evils of the porno industry and sex business in general. And just in case, let's also pray for the for the men or the or the you know the the boys that are involved. So the girls and boys, both of them. And let us pray. And when I I hope we don't. I hope I hope there's no underage kids involved. But you know what? I'm looking at the CPS and I'm looking at these videos by Nancy Schaefer, former senator of uh, Georgia, and she's on there saying that CPS is tied directly into. This sort of, this sort of, uh, this sort of, uh, what's it called? Uh, they, they, where they are, they deliberately will steal kids away from the home, from parents, because they have incentives to do that, money incentives to do that, which had been set up by, by the state that way, you see? And so, um, and, and so the, the, so they, so they, steal, they've been stealing kids away from parents, and then she said that the, that the kids in the custody of the state, had ended up being raped and abused uh, uh, way more times, I think she said six times more, the statistics, according to the, to the government statistics itself, six times more than, the, than kids in the general population. And these kids end up being raped and abused or sex trafficking and the, the porno and all that nonsense, you see? All that evil, twisted stuff. And... and uh, it's, that, it's tied directly into it, to these operations of the state, you see. And they got cops running around, stealing kids away from their homes, from their parents, and then they end up being raped and abused or pimped out, you know, into some sex trafficking cult or something. So, 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 you know, so you, so, you, so you got to realize that until we have put an end to these so-called justice operations, then you know. Th then it, 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 we. Then we can. We, we, okay. We. So you know. We can't have justice. We can't. We can't have justice. 
You see, we cannot have justice until we put an end to these operations that have ended in being these situations that are so terribly unjust and unfair, and especially to kids. You see? Especially to kids. That by itself should be reason enough to say, we got to put an end to this, to this nonsense that we have called the state and the law, and we have to replace it with a system which will protect kids. And we, we make sure that we have community groups of mamas or something like that, and it be an open and honest operation between the mamas and the police officers working together to make sure these kids are kept safe and protected. See, one of the reasons that this judge, uh, Judge uh, Melanonk, Mel Mel uh, uh, I'll put it on this video, I, I don't know if I can pronounce his, his name exactly, Melanok Melanokis or something, or Melanokis, I'll put his video on here. He was uh, saying that he was sick and tired of these cases where the state, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, 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 people working for the state, would have uh, these, uh, you know, social workers, people from the social uh, department, okay, and they would end up, these kids ended up being raped or abused or even murdered. He was trying a case for, uh, where they had murdered the kid, and, uh, and he said he's sick and tired of these cases. The way the state is set up is that whenever this happens, and it happens enough times that this judge is, is exposing it, okay, that the, uh, that the, uh, what's it called, that they would hide behind privacy laws. See, the, the state workers would hide behind privacy laws and they would drag a case out in court for years and years and avoid, uh, you know, and avoid that judge that was angry at them, wait till a new judge got rotated into circuit, and then that they could schmooze over and then they would, you know, uh, you know, get the case dismissed or something. And in that way, then they didn't, then they didn't uh, have to pay, pay any... Uh, then they didn't have they didn't have to pay any consequences and they could keep their job at the state you see so we got this system set up to be it's a monster and it, and it can be used by monsters literally by child rapists child molesters these sex traffickers in the, working in the porno industry and it, they're monsters and they can use they can use this corrupt operation of the social workers and this and the state and they can use that as a way to kidnap kids, get them legally kidnapped from their homes, and then pump them into these, and then put them into, force them into these businesses. We have a monster at work. We have a serial rapist, a mass murderer. Since they said that they've been uh, uh, executing innocent people, I think according to the government statistics, of the 900 cases that they were allowed to uh, exonerate with the DNA or to try to exonerate, it turned out 40% of the times when they tested the DNA so far, on 900 cases, they were innocent. They were not even there. They were not, so you got a mass murderer, a serial rapist, and a child sex trafficker, murderer uh, uh, and murderer, a child murderer, a child sex trafficker, a serial rapist, a mass murderer, and a mass enslaver, and that's your justice of the state. That's your operation of the state. You got to put an end to that, man. You got to put an end to that. It's completely, it's completely unjust, completely unfair, and it's disgusting, nauseating, sickening, and it, and it, and, it, and it's not justice. It's not justice. You you want a justice operation? Then work with a community of mamas, and work for them, and don't work for that state. Do not work for that state if you're a law officer, or if you're a social worker, or anybody like that. Get with the community of mamas, get with other law officers, get with military members, if you can find military members within your community, and say, we want to set up a community with, uh, with, our, uh, with our local community of mamas here. We want to do things, we want to do things with which the mamas say to do. We don't want to work for the state anymore. We don't want to work for this corrupt evil system that ends up with kids being raped and abused and being trafficked into the porno industry. We don't want to have anything to do with that operation anymore. So until we know that we have something worthwhile going on, we're not going to enforce any laws for the state. When we have our mama, when, except for, you know, murder and things that are serious, you know, violent offenders. Okay, other than that, don't do any other work for them. So you'll, you'll take care of the violent offenders, and that's it. So if you're a chief of police or somebody or you're, you're someone that can do this, don't do any work for that evil, corrupt system that ends up in children being molested and raped and trafficked out into the porno industry. Don't do it. Don't work for such a corrupt operation. 
insist that you're going to only go after the murderers and the and the and the really bad people and the ones that are proven to be bad people because again the 40 percent of the times you've been going after those people they've been innocent people so far so you got to get a completely different system you got to completely bunk that system forget all about it forget about it altogether and get a completely new system and one that and one that would be one that would actually work to protect these kids especially and one that makes sure we don't execute innocent people and one that makes sure we don't target uh, our race of uh, African Americans to work as slaves for the state according to Jack Cole more than uh, more there are more Jack Cole of law enforcement against prohibition he's a, a former New Jersey police chief he says that the state has more slaves working for them even though they don't call them slaves they got more African Americans working as slaves now than they had when slavery was the law in this country. Quit working for that state. Don't work for that state anymore. Say you want to get with a community groups of mamas, and you want African American mamas, you want Caucasian mamas, you want Asian Filipino mamas, you want uh, you know, uh, Hispanic mamas. You get the idea, okay? You want the community group of mamas, all the mamas in the neighborhood, okay? And you want them together as a community to supervise the operations of the police. You want to work for the mamas. Say, mama, you're in charge. You're the boss. We're going to enforce laws in this neighborhood and community. We're going to enforce only laws that you say to enforce. And we're going to go after the bad guys that you say to go after these bad guys. Those are the, that's, that's who, that's who, we're going to work for you, mamas. We're not going to work for this crooked operation of the state anymore. And you could do that by getting, if you, if you have to quit working as a police officer, or maybe if you got a union of police officers, you could do it. Or if you have to quit working as of police officers, you could get police, former police officers start up, or, or current police officers could work at starting a private company, what they would be a private security company, and it would have law officers and military officers, and you start a private security company, and you go into the neighborhood and you get the mamas on board with the program. You say, we want to be your private security team for this neighborhood. And when we're in charge here, or when we get, uh, when we get enough mamas here and we got enough uh, members on board with this community uh, uh, program here for this, for this neighborhood, okay, we're going to tell the law officers to stay the hell out of this neighborhood. Okay, we're going to tell our fellow law officers, stay the hell out of this, this neighborhood. This is our neighborhood. We're going to protect and serve the people of this neighborhood the way we want to. And if you do that, you're going to have lots of success. You're going to have great success with that. And you're and uh, and uh, you know don't don't give in to this evil, corrupt operation. It's pure evil at work. It's pure evil at work in the in the d disguised as the justice of the state. It's a mass murderer, a mass enslaver, a serial rapist, a child molester, a child sex trafficker. That's what you, you that's you've been doing you've been working for that guy. That's who you've been working for. Quit working for him. Quit working for him and go to work for the mamas, for the community of mamas. And that's my best advice to any police officers listening to this. And I hope there's plenty of military people listening to this because we would need the military people especially because that's who the state would send after the police officers to when if they wanted to send someone after the police officers. So we would want to have police officers with military people for our neighborhood. And make sure this, and make sure the military uh, military members of the neighborhood are t are saying to the are saying to the state we're not going you're, you're not going to send us after this group of police officers for this neighborhood it's not going to happen you see and then that's how you could have a, a, a an operation that's righteous and just and you could and you could and you could have law enforcement operations that really do work for 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 justice for you know that's so all right so anyway uh. You have this lady, Nancy Schaefer, who worked for the state. She was a senator. She was exposing the stuff. I'll put these videos on here. She had uh, uh, been talking about the way DCF was tied directly into these sex traffickers, child rapists, even child murderers, and that they were perpetrating their, their evil operations through DCF, through the Department of Children and Families, and that it had become very corrupt. So, so, and you know what happened to her? She lost, she, was on, she, she lost her position as a senator after she exposed it. Do you know what happened to her? And she said she went to all sorts of people from the state, fellow members of, of you know, her associates at the state, and nobody wanted to help her. Nobody wanted to help her. And, uh, and, they, and she lost her job. 
or they want, excuse me, I take that back, they wanted to help her, some of them said they wanted to help her, but they were afraid of losing their job. Their job had been threatened. So when she did it, they, they, she lost her job, and then shortly after that, uh, they say it was, a, it was a suicide murder of her husband. Lots of people suspect it was a, you know, it was a double homicide. So, you know, don't work for that state. They're very evil and corrupt. Make sure you got lots of military people with you. Make sure you got lots of police officers with you. And go into a neighborhood and say, we want to start a new trend here. We want to set this neighborhood up to be an independent community that we, we enforce laws for the mamas, for the community mamas. We make laws through the community vote of the mamas. And they tell us what to do. You see, everything's done through the community vote of the mamas. That way the power is held with the community. So it's not held by a few corrupt members of the state perpetrating the works of a mass murderer, a child rapist, a, and, a, and, a, and a child sex trafficker. You don't want to work for that evil, corrupt operation anymore. You really don't. So, uh, so uh, you know, let, so let, let's say a, a, a quick prayer. To, okay, yeah, if the power is held with the community of mamas, then they, they can't be corrupt that way, you see? The power is held with the entire community. you got mamas uh, for the, representing for the people. That's the best way to represent for the people. It's through their own loving mamas, you see? Because they are going to work in their best interest of the people for their neighborhood. They're going to work in the best interest for their sons, their daughters, their, uh, their, uh, you know, their, their, their friends and family, their loving husband, okay? The mom, mama's going to do that. A community of mamas together, you can, and that way every public member of that community is going to be represented, you see? And, and all right, so let's go ahead and uh, finish up with a prayer here. Uh, Let's pray for all the girls who have been addicted to drugs, exploited by the, evil of the porno, uh, by the evils of the porno industry and the sex business in general. And let us pray that these girls will find the way to Jesus. Now, keep in mind that many of the girls who do manage to break free from addiction have already given credit to a supernatural power at work. Uh, they realize that it's, it comes from a higher power. And that's where they get this, they gained their per, this, pers, this strength, this personal strength to do what they do, to conquer that addiction. You see, it comes, their power comes from a higher power. Many of these girls also do believe that supernatural power is Jesus himself. So, now we learn from the Bible that when Jesus himself prays, he goes to the Heavenly Father. Paul, the Apostle, lets us know that Jesus calls him by the name Abba, which is something like Dad or Daddy or Papa. And Jesus wants us to call his own uh, Father by the same name, Abba. See, so that way we can be adopted by Abba to be like his brothers and sisters in his own family. Now, for uh, inspiration for any uh, girls in the sex uh, industry, you know, to quit working the sex industry, quit, quit doing that sex business, because you know why? Because when Jesus, uh, when Jesus came here, he had, uh, well, first of all, his, uh, the father, you had the mother, she had been a young Jewish girl, she had not had sex yet, she had been impregnated by the, by the supernatural father in some extraordinary way, and then she gave birth to Jesus. So you had the father, the son, and through the birth, or excuse me, the father, the mother, and through the birth of their son, you had Jesus the Christ. Or excuse me, you had, uh, you had three persons in one. With, okay? So you had three persons in one with, you had the mother, the father, through the birth of their son, Jesus the Christ, you got three persons in one. Okay, that's what I meant to say. All right, so, uh, so you know, this, 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 uh, this is a blessed trinity. Now, think about it like this, okay? Jesus, the pop, let's call his papa, let's call him Abba, right? So let's call him Papa Abba. You got Papa Abba at the top there, of a, like a Christmas tree. You got Jesus, his mama, Mary at the top there with Papa Abba, okay? And then you got every family that comes from them on down through the generations of families up until now, up until our generation, you see? like a big, huge Christmas tree, like a Blessed Trinity Christmas tree. So every family of mother and father and kids can be like their own Blessed Trinity and included in this great, you know, uh, bless, in, this, uh, in this Blessed Trinity family tree, you see? So that's inspiration. To quit working that sex business and look, look towards marriage and look towards having kids instead. 
All right. So I'm going to go ahead and say the prayer now. Uh, I'm going to say it a little bit differently than, than uh, Jesus says the prayer. Because or, or, because, or excuse me, not then Jesus says the prayer, but then it's written in the Bible that the way he said it. Because I personally think that Jesus and his Father are here right now. Jesus and Abba are here right now on earth. So instead of saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Well, instead of saying all that, I don't think Jesus said it that way, by the way. I'll correct myself on that one. I, I think the Bible twisted it a bit. And we know they changed the words later in the generation. They changed the word for the Lord's Prayer because I have a Bible from an older Bible, and I can prove it to anybody who don't believe me. Okay, It's uh, an older Bible. My dad gave it to me when I was a kid. And in the Bible it says, uh, forgive us our debts. In the Lord's Prayer it says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You see? Now that's tied into this, uh, to this theme of money. Debts. And we know in other stories, it didn't say our trespasses, which is tied into this idea of sin. You say, say, forgive us our debts. Forgive us money that's owed. Now, what pushes a girl into the sin of, or let's say the sin or evils of the porno industry? What pushes a girl to do that other than, oh, well, we already said drugs. What other, what, and, and we know now that you've got this big glamorous operation going, it's very pretty look, and they got, you know, all this, all this money and, and stuff and, and fancy cars and the jewelry and the nice clothes and everything. And it's so attractive looking, okay? So what 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 gave that? So we said the drugs pushed the girls to do it. The drugs built up the business through the through these girls that were hooked on the drugs, and that's why they went and did all this stuff, on making the porno movies, and then they gave, and then they paid them off with money. Then they started making money. They're doing the drugs. They're making the money. That you know, it's what a great business, and you know, and then and then you find out later if from you know some of these girls that come out after the fact. It's not as glamorous as it appeared to be, and they ended up being uh, they ended up uh, not being happy with 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 any of that. So um, so the uh, so the so the, so the point was that what else pushes girls to do that? Money, the need for money. So you have the need for drugs, this desperate need for drugs, or you got this desperate need for money. So Jesus says, "Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors." That's tied into this idea of money. Guess who? is in control of that money. Guess who rigged that money system that's also a complete scam on the society? The same, the, you got folks from the same establishment who put Jesus to death. Those Jewish bankers are the ones running that money operation. Jewish bankers. And they're pulling these scams on, for example, old ladies who own homes, foreclosure laws, property loans. You know, they're stealing away people's possessions and property and homes from them through these banking scams, these money scams. So if you're a Jewish banker listening to this, you know, and you want forgiveness from the Father, well, you know, and I'm sure you could use it. You of all people could use it. You of all of all, you know, of all the folks in the world that I that I could imagine could could most would be most in need of of the Father's forgiveness. It would be Jewish bankers. You Jewish bankers. You could use the Father's forgiveness more than anyone. So if you want to excuse the girls now, they they're feeling this desperate need for money. They're desperate for money, and then what do they do? What do they do when they need money? They go, and they, uh, they do things they wouldn't normally do. They go looking to make money some way, somehow, some way, and then that porno industry catches them. Well, you can make money over here with this porno industry. And then they start doing that. If it hadn't been for that desperate need for the money caused by the Jewish banker and his Jewish banking scams, then that girl would not have been pushed into doing the porno. So if you so you know if you want forgiveness from the father, you you excuse the girl of the money that she's owed. She doesn't owe that money anymore, and and uh, you forgive her of her debts. You see, and you just do that just in general. See, and that's how you gain forgiveness for the father, from the father. Um, uh, so uh, let's go ahead and say the prayer the way I think it, it uh, the way I uh, uh, would say it uh, with uh, Papa Abba. All right, so Papa Abba. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is, as it is in heaven. In heaven, in heaven, you see? Jesus is going for heaven on earth, man. He wants things to be just like heaven right here on earth. That's what that means. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. And uh, like I said, this will make this prayer as a special dedication today to all the girls addicted to drugs and all the girls ex or or some or the boys, all all, you know, all the girls and boys addicted to drugs and any any uh, any anyone that's been exploited by the evils of the porno industry and the sex business in general. All right, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Papa Abba, Mama Mary, Jesus the Christ, amen. And that's a three-pointed blessing, by the way, so that's not a cross, just in case anybody's wondering. I do Papa Abba to the forehead, then Mama Mary, and then Jesus on the side, on each side. You see? So that's, uh, that's a three-point blessing, like a triangle. All right, thank you so much. Have a beautiful, blessed day.